to not only listen to each other on this planet, but to listen to what the messages are that are coming from off planet. Until we do that, until we allow them into our reality, there is no communication. They can talk to us all they want to, but until we let them into who we are as a body, mind, and spirit, we just have a one-way communication. It's time. It's time for the communication and the education to go galactic. If there's one race of extraterrestrials visiting here, if there's just one, there's a lot. You think there would be only one race of extraterrestrials in the entire universe and us and that's it? You have to accept sooner or later the fact that we're not alone. And once you accept that fact, then you're going to have to accept also the fact that there's many, many, many alien races out there, not just one. There could be hundreds. There could be thousands. Each with their own lifestyle, their own purposes for their destiny and their own reasons for why they come to Earth and visit us. Is this possible that these lights are being very carefully and gently present as a, as a potential guidance and warning system for us to wake up to what we're doing to our planet and ourselves before it's too late. So I think they would be kind of concerned about what we're doing to our planet because we're polluting it, we're trashing it, and we're doing all other things to it, like doing wars so the land gets all messed up too. I believe that the condition that we're under as a global civilization, uh, it's becoming apparent that the violence we're causing to our environment, uh, to our non-sustainable, non-renewable resources is becoming obvious. The problem is it's not clear all the solutions that must be brought about in order to combat that. We have a real problem on our hands. But uh, we caused it so we can turn it around if we have the will to do so. We should probably explore more about space and focus our technologies and other ways besides war. And when we gain the capability to discover another civilization, I would hope we would have the good sense just to observe and see what's going on. And I would hope that our visitors are probably doing just that. They come from all over the universe to come and check out this planet of these advanced beings that have free will tremendous spiritual potential, intellectual capacity, evolving DNA happening at rapid levels, and they're rushing headlong to destruction. We're going to have to wake up. We're going to have to become knowledgeable. We're going to have to uh, develop new science because we still don't know all the answers to the questions, who are we, how do we get here, and where are we going? and our relationship to the cosmos. We're having trouble with our relationship with each other. We still use violence to settle conflict. And if we're to have a sustainable civilization, those behaviors must go away. And they're not going to go away until we change and find peace within ourselves. If we destroy this planet, the consequences do not just reside with us. The consequences are very, very galactic. So they're very concerned that humanity does evolve. Those that are really awake to it and realize that we are not alone also realize that we are spiritual beings with so much positive potential, so much positive potential to do good and to help make this world a better world. I think we're spiritual beings riding around in a physical body and for a long time we've had to pay a lot of attention to just getting through the physical and I think the spiritual has suffered but we are in a spiritual renaissance right now and I think the Phoenix Lights are part of that. There are very few things that are bigger and more important to every human being on the planet than the topic of this documentary of the implications of, the, of what the Phoenix Lights represents. It was clearly no accident that this demonstration and parade, this extraordinary single category, single class event of the Phoenix Lights occurred. Multiple purposes, multiple dimensions, 
multiple impact potential, and I think uh, we're only beginning to see the tip of the iceberg of the effect of what took place back in March 13th of 1997 here. Years later, it still gives me goosebumps. So I'm into it. I, I can't help it. It's a part of my life. It's, it's a good part of my life. It's a good thing. The anomalous experience, whether it's seeing the Phoenix lights, uh, believing you've been contacted, having conversations with other dimensions, it doesn't really much matter. What matters is what you make of it and what you do with it. We're all here together for a reason, and we're all here together for a purpose. And uh, what could the highest, greatest purpose of our being here be? And that would be to, to love one another, to be kind to one another, to be compassionate, to, um, to share our joy with each other, and to listen, to listen to each other. If we had the opportunity to listen to this information, and therefore help our children and help the world grow before it's too late, and we didn't take the opportunity, it will come back to us. It's important that we look at our civilization, our place in history, use our tools of science for greater understanding, to promote the greater good, and that's what it's all about. I think we are in a pinnacle point of our civilization, and I think it makes a difference which direction we go next. Hopefully, we'll have contact one day if enough people are really open and realize that there is nothing to fear. I look forward to that. It was all too symmetrical. You can't control flares that way. There's just no way they were flares. It was so technologically advanced that uh, it was a thrilling feeling to see it. The lights were really brilliant, uh, and it was just fascinating. It, I mean, it was, it was enormous. It just felt otherworldly. You know, you're, in your gut, you could just tell it was otherworldly. It has never been identified to this date. And I suspect that uh, unless uh, uh, the Defense Department proves us otherwise that it was probably uh, some form of an alien spacecraft. If a strange being came to my door, would I be scared? Would I be 
uh, frightened uh, when I walk in. I don't know. It depends on how ugly it is. If they would come to my door, I would say, well, come on in. Let's talk. Let me find out more about you. <laughs> that would be great. Oh, my. <laughs> Such fun. <laughs>